But so now in the U newbie yard, the newbie yard's a bit smaller. We'll help a little bit with mob density. So is a good opportunity to talk about like old school newbie yards and the differences between some of them because depending on where you started your newbie yard in like everquest would be very different right there's a difference between like nectulus and either kanos or freeports newbie yards kanos and freeport newbie yards were a bit sort of boxed in and pretty damn small um and then also with the way that uh the clipping plane worked in eq it was you know back in the day at least um when it was pulled in by default uh, it made it a bit smaller but um or it made it feel pretty small but then you've got yeah like gfa you've got butcher block which is nubiard plus right so just kind of expanded from there you've got steam font so we talked about steam font a bit um because we had been referencing some of the smaller ones prior to that but then we talked about steam font and it was like um i had i had rolled my necro on p99 in steam font and um went out there and just started playing and just kept getting tooled there's so many like random badass roamers and stuff that's just like just getting stomped over and over by random stuff and i had so much fun and there's a different levels of camps there there are camps there right there's not really a clear delineation of like this is where the newbie yard is and this isn't g face pretty much the entire zones of newbie yard most other newbie yards kind of small box out of city i don't so i think the small box out of the city is actually the exception bunny that's what we that's what we started discussing once we got into it because if we think like freeport and kanos and it's small box nectalus is a full zone i'm not screwing that up right like that is with the newbie log and all that nectalus i always screw up the force for whatever reason nectalus is a full zone and there's stuff out there that can just tool you um now i'm not saying it's got like the the level the the sort of absolute level diversity but yeah and then butcher blocks of full zone blah blah blah. i would say g fay imagine okay i i don't uh, i think i might have had one or two like back back in the day like total newbie experiences in g fay but with the fog and how big that is and how easy it is to sort of like wander off somewhere and then potentially get tooled by a centurion or something like that so that's kind of what i what i mean and so anyways we we started talking about our experience in steam font because after i started the necro i'm pretty sure it was the necro that we did this on um then nick had rolled a cleric i think and we started playing together and we were still like running into situations where we got wiped on different stuff and it was so much fun and so that's that's the thing that i've been thinking about uh over the weekend and then um <clears throat> earlier in the week was just that it, that experience in the newbie yard uh in a round sort of the newbie area as it radiates out of just having those things where like oh shit you know like instead of the jackal pup it's like a jackal or whatever um and you're like okay i don't want to get anywhere near that thing right like there have to be those moments where it's like oh oh there it is let me back up because it's aggro and it's it's higher level or it's a bit more vicious or whatever but we can see that uh pattis has done a, a couple of things that are super exciting that we had talked about uh last stream and what i had done was i'd started from the other side of this equation and was looking in shaded dunes and pulling in new night harbor Whereas he has, he has now pulled in Shaded Dunes elements into the Night Harbor he's been working on and made the modification here on a couple of things. So let's, let's talk through those and look at them and be excited, be excited. But he said, I guess my point is that most open zones are still somewhat predefined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's correct. Um, there's, there's always that kind of safer radius. And I would say... Uh, not always there's there's often that safer radius and then the occasional thing that just flattens you but but there's a different feel i guess in each one of them so anyways i just just logged in pattis or Patus or just harrison which is easier i think for me um i like what you've done already it's badass fallen watch is clearly visible up on the hill and then we've got the glowy we got the glowy entrance to Wormsbane pulling us over here as newbies. So imagine, imagine we're playing for the first time and we come out into the newbie yard and we look. We already see there's this wondrous thing that's going to call us to adventure longer term out there on the horizon. And then, but then we look over here and we're like, what? It's glowing. It looks like the entrance to something. And it's so close. Is that meant for me as a newbie? Can I do this for reals? So yeah, 
we've got this we've got this entrance um that summons us over here to go into this lobby dungeon we had some really fun discussions about how to uh, potentially expand a dungeon and um how that may take you to some other other areas and stuff so i'm excited for that then we've got these ruins that pat has put in here and then we've got this would be the zone line and we had discussed having basically wall ruins and stuff like that and other ruins around here so ruins would extend out a bit and then this this wall would be uh would be more ruined instead of looking like a well-maintained wall are you guys going to have level transitions? In my opinion, I've always liked transitions. Yeah, we really, we like transitions as well. The zone lines. Uh, big fan of zone lines and the gameplay uh, that uh, comes from it. Train to zone kind of thing. Yeah, this is very cool. Pattis has got a really cool facade going now. So basically what we're focused on now, the actual zone, and we may have to break it up into other zones uh, if it gets too dense later, is just right here. This is the zone. The rest of it is facade. And so this is really just meant to, you know, uh, pull you in. And then when um, Pattis, basically when we, when we re-sculpt this a little bit and we break up this um, this marker that he put in to have have it be ruined wall pieces that stick up. So you got an idea of where the zone line is, but it's not like blocking your line of sight or anything. Then it really, it, it should draw you out of the city towards like, your sort of first dungeon adventure and then into the zone with more more adventures and then you know eventually up into fallen watch um and so what are your thoughts on convoluted zone lines with odd paths and invisible walls the zones in kunork outdoor zones were very frustrating well we try to avoid invisible walls when possible uh we'll we'll see how we can play around with that and have it not be too janky convoluted zone lines with odd paths um i might i might fall into the pro convoluted camp unfortunately like i we were talking about this yesterday once this once this is kind of broken up and you pass through wherever to me as long as there's something delineating that w once you hit the zone line you figure out okay there's a zone line there and now it's easier for you to remember where it was i'm i'm not one of these people that feels that you need to always have like this very logical choke point that you know, funnels you down to the specific point on in a zone wall, and oh, and then there's obviously your your zone line, like going into you know that that sort of like old classic EQ choke you down to like go into Kithikor or something like that. I'm fine with crazy wide uh, Karana zone lines and all that sort of shit. Um, but I may be in the minority. I just to me, it's once you kind of figure out where it is, then. If we can put some stuff there to make it easier for you to know the second time, then great. Um, I'm also a big fan of like, depending on the zone, having vistas and having that feel of it being a giant. I like I like the idea of being able to see into the next zone, even two zones. Like if if we go into if we go north into Sungreet Strand, like on the far side of that zone, you could still see a little bit of peak of the facade of Night Harbor. I like that kind of shit for areas that are supposed to be vast. And then I like these bumbling around in the in the fog feel of like Tox or I mean even GFA for as big as it was, right? Like with the crazy fog and all that stuff. So grew up in Tox. After that, I never had any problems with confusing or hard to see in zones. Ah, see? It was formative. It's funny, I, I I was thinking of land nav just because I was listening to a discussion with some uh, former German infantrymen earlier, like while I was doing some cleaning and they were discussing land, ma land nav and I, I was just realizing how rusty mine is. Uh, it's been a long time since I was in the army. That's something we want to work on soon. Get out with our compasses and map, go exploring. Will, will there be any forgiveness in the early levels when it comes to losing experience? I don't know if we've had a firm answer beyond, you know, the potential for maintaining the old status quo of like no experience loss up to a certain level. I, I, I would like for us to maybe play around with that and see what it feels like. Because again, I'm not, I'm not a super big fan of setting uh, precedents that then, you know, change where it's like this part of the game is not impacting you until later or you know like the game should feel a lot like the game from the early levels it you know how punishing is it that's the thing that we tune um what will what will the death penalties be so you've got to recover your corpse uh there will be experience loss you can de-level as part of experience loss uh, we're looking at some things like casters may have their book uh, left 
on on them uh on their corpse um and then we'll look at how we handle spells with regards to what you keep when available to you when you die you can use multiple spell books mounts can die mounts can get rezzed mounts leave a corpse permadeath option um there's some there's some game modes that you can opt into that we've discussed in the past oh shit this guy's just working me that uh are very likely to make an appearance in some form in the game nick is a huge proponent of making that uh, making those available and we've even talked a little bit about the idea of making it so that uh some of the game modes essentially there there's actual sort of a uh, lore tie-in and in, in how they're triggered and things like that if you think about like an eq uh when you went pvp you know there was a priest of discord so it wasn't like just a, a slash command or something that you do so always luigi said hello this game looks awesome it reminds oh i did not pay attention nice i just got tooled and that's how we roll look at chat for one second jackal puppy eats you this game looks awesome it reminds me of dark age of camelot a bit nice yeah so this this game is intentionally designed with with that era of uh mmo in mind game is already hard good yes point yeah i've leveled the skeleton walks like you in the morning until you loosen up the little joints. Um, in theory, at night, those skeletons walk a bit different. They walk faster, they're aggro, their eyes should glow, that kind of stuff. So we got version 1, and we got version 2. 1, 2. Shout out to the gnome riding the ogre. Yeah. The title, Monsters and Memories, reminds you of the Tom Hanks movie, Mazes and Monsters. Anybody seen that movie? A few times, yes. Yes, that was considered when the name was, was first uh, being knocked around. Got a dungeon entrance. Will leather workers be able to make gnome saddles to ride ogres with? Uh, I'm going to take that as a serious question. And I, I think it might be, it wouldn't be called a saddle. It'll be a, like a modified backpack. It'll be a backpack type. Um, but they can they can probably make saddles for mounts and things like that. There's a whole like equestrian tack kind of thing that we want to get in. Not just for gnomes, right? All small races. For now, it's it's strictly a gnome feature. The meme the meme was gnomes. It wasn't just small races. Why does a gnome get to ride an ogre, but none of the other small races do? It all stems back from the first encounters between the ogres and the gnomes. And the gnomes were the smallest of the races that the ogres had ever seen. But their ferocity and ingenuity and bravery and matter-of-factness made a great and lasting impression upon the ogres.